what is up everyone and welcome back to another video so as you guys know chapter 5 season 2 just came out a couple days ago and an absolute ton has changed with a bunch of new pois tons of new items mythic items pretty much half of the map being entirely changed up there's a whole bunch of different stuff in this season and i'm super excited for it guys and in today's video we're going to be talking about exactly what you can do to improve super fast in chapter 5 season 2 this is going to include all the best practice methods the best loadouts to carry all the map changes and overall by the end of this video you should know exactly what you need to do to become an insane player whether your goal is to rank up fast, play tournaments, or just play the game regularly. Before we get into it, be sure to drop a like if the video helps you out, subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more. I know I haven't been posting a lot lately, but I'm getting back into it, guys, and I'm going to be posting a bunch of tips and tricks videos, so definitely stay tuned. And lastly, guys, if you want to show some extra support, it's always super, super appreciated if you could use code Teku in the item shop. It's 100% free for you, and it seriously does help me out a bunch. As always, thank you so much to everyone who uses it. With that said, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get straight into today's video. So starting off this video, the first topic I want to talk about is going to be the best loadout. We're going to begin by talking about pretty much just the best items to carry, since as you know, the loot pool did have a lot of major changes starting out the new season. Regarding your weapons, these are going to be pretty standard like they've always been. You've got your basic ARs in the loot pool, you've got solid SMGs, and a variety of shotguns. With the ARs and SMGs, I really don't see too much that I need to say about them. There's really no options that are particularly bad or good. They're all kind of in the same range and it's up to preference. Really, the only weapons most people are actually talking about right now are going to be the shotguns, specifically the new gatekeeper and the hammer pump. When it comes comes to which one of these you should actually hold, it's going to be largely up to your playstyle to be honest. The gatekeeper is really solid and super close range, especially if you're going to be the type of player who likes to get aggressive and jump in. If you're right in somebody's face and you have a gatekeeper shotgun, it's basically game over for him. But if you like to play a bit more distance in box fights, or you simply prefer the pump type of shotgun and then switching to an AR or SMG, then the hammer pump is probably going to be your best choice. Personally, I do prefer the hammer pump because I very rarely dive in on someone in a fight, but if that's a major part of your strategy, then you may opt for the gatekeeper. Once again, it's really going to be a matter of playstyle, and I can't really say one shotgun is actually better than the other. The other part of the loot pool I really want to talk about is the two really strong utility items that got added this season, which are the Icarus wings, I think that's how it's pronounced, and the Zeus Thunderbolt. Starting out with the wings, the wings are pretty solid for mobility, especially in early to mid game if you're rotating in quieter areas and you won't get beamed, but I do recommend you probably drop them once you're getting toward end game, since it's super super easy to get beamed with these. They are a really good item and you can get a big distance fast, but overall guys, regardless of what time of the game you're actually carrying, them be super super careful because as awesome as this item is it is super easy to get beamed with it and you can die super fast and of course the big one is going to be the thunderbolts everyone's talking about these things they are pretty solid in team modes and especially if your team has multiple of these and you're fighting a big fight with a bunch of other people they can definitely be really solid really the only risk is getting beamed in the air but even then you're shooting lightning bolts at them so it's pretty hard to counter i do struggle to see quite as much of a use in solos but if it fits your play style or you find success with them then they can certainly be a good item so overall i definitely recommend recommend you guys experiment with these items a little bit. I do think they're probably going to be worth carrying for pretty much every single player. So definitely keep that in mind. Getting into our next portion of the video though, and what I want to talk about next is briefly going to be the map changes, as well as how you can master the new map and how to find the right drop spot to make sure that you're consistently surviving off spawn. Dying off spawn is a major issue for a lot of people, especially in ranked in tournaments, so I do want to go ahead and address that. Starting off, as you probably know, a bunch of new locations just came out. You've got Mount Olympus, Grimgate, the Underworld, and Brawler's Battleground. And these changes also include like biome changes and other small unnamed spots as well but those pois are going to be the main changes that everyone's talking about now what i recommend you do is actually pretty simple i recommend you land at each of the new spots at least a couple times each you want to get a general sense for where everything is and from there you can dial it in a bit and figure out what drop spot is actually going to fit you best the reason for landing at each of these spots a couple times isn't necessarily to get good at them as a drop spot but really just to get familiar with the poi since even if you don't land at them consistently you are going to run into them a ton in mid and end game so it's definitely good to know your way around with that said, when it comes to picking a drop spot, you don't have to choose one exact drop spot to perform well, pretty much like the pros do, but I do recommend you have at least one or two spots in your back pocket that you land at consistently and know inside and out. These spots can be major POIs, they can be a smaller unnamed spot, or pretty much anything in between, it really just depends on your playstyle. If you're a more aggressive player and you'd like to go for those early game fights and you're willing to take the risk, then you may want to focus on the new spots or places near the center of the map, or just places that are close to the bus on that particular route. If you're more passive or somewhere in between, maybe opt for an edge map POI or an unnamed location with good loot. That way you can have a nice safe early game, get kitted up, and then you can up it to be more aggressive or just play for placement once you have good enough setup. Overall though, get familiar with all the new changes, explore all the new stuff, and then come to a decision on which spots you may want to frequent, whether you want to land at the same place every single game, or whether you want to have a couple spots you're familiar with. It's going to help your early games a whole lot, you're going to be way more consistent, and probably fix the dying off spawn issue if you're dealing with that. Getting into our next topic, and the next thing I want to talk about is going to be creative practice. As with any other season, creative is also 
was super important for chapter 5 season 2. I don't want to go into a ridiculous amount of detail since I do plan on releasing videos about a variety of different maps, but you are going to want to implement some extra fighting practice through creative, as well as some direct practice for whichever mechanics you find yourself struggling with, whether that's piece control, editing, retakes, aim, or pretty much anything else. When it comes to fighting practice, I do have a couple of maps I want to go ahead and recommend real quick in this video. Once again, it is going to be brief. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail as I do have videos coming out in the future. One map I've always liked is the speed realistic 1v1 map by Ken Beans. I'll go ahead and put that code up on screen right now. In this map, you can either play with a friend or do matchmaking, and the map is pretty much a realistic 1v1, but it pushes you immediately into close range, which is kind of going to simulate like a lot of in-game fights are. You're super close to your opponent, one person's W keying, one person's playing passive. So one person's forced to play more aggressive and both people basically have to try to end the fight fast, which should be your goal in regular games too, pretty much whether you're playing passive or aggressive. You want to end fights as fast as possible, and this is going to help with that. Another really good fighting map is Martaz's Turtle Wars, which is pretty much another close range box fighting scenario map. This helps a ton with close range peaks. It helps you hit your shots more consistently. And overall, it's another fantastic fighting map. You can also get a lot of repetition in because it's not one of those maps where you go against one other player. It's actually a map where a bunch of people go into the map at once and you're fighting a whole ton of people. So it can definitely get you a lot of fights in really fast. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put up the code to that on screen right now. And next up is going to be another map I really like for just general mechanical practice, which is going to be Raider 464's Mechanics Training Map V4. This map is another great option for practice as it has pretty much everything. It has aim training, it has peace control, editing, peak practice, free builds, and more. It's far too much to cover in just one video, but if you have pretty much any mechanical weakness in this game, this map is probably going to be a fantastic option to attack in and improve fast. There are other mechanics maps out there, but very few of them are as well-rounded as this one. So what I really recommend you do is figure out what you actually struggle with in-game, whether it's your builds, your edits, your peace control, your aim, or whatever other factor, and then you can use this map to actually target it. I really don't recommend you just mindlessly hop into this map and do random stuff, because that'll still help, but if you can really focus on what you need to improve on and really attack your weaknesses with it, then you're going to see some giant improvements with this map. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put the code up on screen right now for you guys. And with that said, guys, getting into the last tip for today's video, and this one is a classic Teco tip, but a very important one nonetheless, and that tip is to VOD review. If you're not familiar with it, VOD reviewing simply means watching back your gameplay, whether it's through replay mode or recording or whatever other method, and basically looking to see what you do right and wrong in your games. Right now, we're dealing with a really complex meta with a whole bunch of different stuff going on, and the average player has really strong mechanics. So with that said, having good experience and having good game sense is one of the biggest things that's going to differentiate you from the average player, not only in the current season, but in future seasons as well. So definitely make sure that you're spending plenty of time reviewing your games, seeing what you do right and wrong, and planning your practice accordingly. And of course, another option is to watch pros gameplay as well and see what they do different from you, especially when it comes to their competitive games. If you can see what a pro does to beat a bunch of semi-pro players or other pro players, and you can implement that into your own gameplay, then that's going to help you out an absolute ton. Overall, you can seriously learn a lot really fast if you watch a pro's gameplay. You don't watch it for fun, but you watch it with the intent of learning. So definitely give both of these options a shot, your own gameplay and a pro's gameplay, and that should help you out a ton. But with all that said, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to improve super fast in Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 2. Overall, we covered a good amount in this video, and hopefully it helped you guys out by following all the methods in this video, by adjusting to the meta in the ways we talked about, and by practicing effectively in VOD reviewing. You should see some giant improvements in your gameplay pretty quickly. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more content just like this in the future. And as always, guys, it's super, super, super appreciated if you could use code TECO in the item shop. A giant shout out to everyone who uses it. You guys are awesome. And finally, guys, with the new season out, let me know down in the comments what videos you guys want to see next. I'm always super open to ideas, so let me know what you guys want to see and I can make it happen. But with all that said, guys, thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.